we're going to make a Japanese instrument called the Den Den Daiko. This is from the monkey drum family and instruments like these can be found all over the world, not just in Japan. We have three different versions of the Den Den Daiko. So decide which one you want and make sure that you have all the materials that you need. If you're going with the CD DVD version, you're going to need a CD or a DVD, some kind of stick. If you're going with the fruit cup version, you will need a clean and dry fruit cup. You will also need a hole puncher. And you will need a sharpened pencil. And if you're going with the tube version, you'll need the tube the, and the hole puncher. All three versions are going to require string, some pony beads, scissors, tape, a pencil that you will write with, and a ruler to measure. We're going to start with the CD DVD version. But in all three cases, we're going to need to create the strings that are going to go onto our Den Den Daiko. So in order to do that, we need to measure the width of our CD. So I'm going to take the ruler, make sure that you're on the inches side, and I'm going to measure from one end of the CD to the other. It's a little over four and a half. So I'm going to round that up to five and add three more inches. Five plus three is eight. So I want my string to be eight inches long, but I need to add a little extra so that I can tie on the beads. So I'm going to measure 10 inches of string. Make sure you're on the inch side, hold it tight, place your finger right on the 10, and cut the string. The hardest part about this project is tying the beads on. If you're not very good at tying, you're going to want to extend the length of your string. So if you want to have a lot of extra play to tie those strings, then I would add another five inches onto any number that you get, depending on which one you're working with. You want to make sure it's tight, because when you play it, you don't want those beads coming off. You simply place the string through the bead, fold over, and pull the outer part to tie it. So now I have my string. I'm going to take the string and I'm going to go straight across the back of the CD and tape it down from end to end. So you'll hear that it taps against itself, just like our original version does, taped all the way across the back. So I have a tongue depressor here, but you can use a popsicle stick. If you don't have one of those, you can use a pencil. Just make sure you tape it extra. I'm going to place that behind the CD on top of the string, and I'm going to tape that to the back of our CD. I'm doing three levels here. The top of the stick, the part that goes over the string, and the bottom of the stick. So now I have our first version of the Den Den Daiko. Next we're going to go to the cup version. This is a little bit tricky because you need to use a hole puncher. It is a bit tight. So if you need assistance, please ask an adult. We're going to make a hole in one end of the cup 
so that we have the stick, a place for the stick that we're going to be using into the bottom of our Dun Dun Daiko. So I'm going to put it down as far as I can and make a hole right there. Then you're going to need a pencil that's sharpened because you're going to place that pencil all the way through the hole. You can use scotch tape for the next part, but I'm going to use packing tape because it's going to be a little bit stronger and work a little bit better. What we want to do is tape completely across the top here to make a surface for the string to adhere to and the beads to hit on. So I'm going to cut a piece of tape and place it all the way across the center, all the way across the center. Fold it down, make sure that it's nice and tight. And then we're going to go the other way. So we just went across this way, now we're going to take a piece of tape and go across the other way. It's okay if your piece of tape is a little too big. If it's too small, simply try again. And now we've made a head for our drum. We have a very small back in this case, and every fruit cup is a little bit different in size. So again, we're going to measure the back here. Make sure that you're on the inches side. This is one and a half inches. Because it's a pretty long distance, we had a flat CD, so we didn't need as much room to get the two beads to hit. We're going to need some more room. So I'm going to add four more inches to that one and a half. That's a little bit trickier math, but let's just make that one and a half two for those of you having trouble tying your beads. And now two plus four is six. So let's get six inches of string. Make sure you're on the inch side, measure to the six. And I'm gonna test that out. It looks like it's going to be short. So I'm going to go with 10 again. And now this looks like it will be much better. So one more time, we're going to place the bead at the end of the string and tie it. Make sure you tie it tight so those beads aren't flying around as you're playing your dendon daiko. Double tying it just to be sure. And now I'm on to the other side. Place the bead through. Go around. And again, if you need assistance, please ask an adult to help you with this part. If you don't have beads, you can tape something to the end of the string. Now we're gonna take the basis of our Den Den Daiko and we're going to tape the string to the back. So I'm gonna place it against the back here. This is a little trickier because the pencil is there and it's pulling the cup. So I have to kind of hold on to both sides, try to get it into the middle and tape it all the way across. Now we have it. And you can see that this one is a little more authentic. It's hanging down a bit. So you may want to add some tape on the sides I'm going to go ahead and tape a little bit on the sides to keep it from going too far down. And this will all depend on the shape and size of your cup and the location of where you have cut the hole and also the distance from the back to the front of your Den Den Daigo. But now this one is going to be the most authentic because we have sort of the three-dimensional shape there, whereas we have the circular shape, but it's one-dimensional here. 
And now for the third version, you don't have either of those to work with. Most of us have an empty toilet paper tube. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flatten it. And then we're going to flatten the other end. So we're going to completely flatten this tube. And then we're going to close on one side the entire end. So I'm basically going to take tape, fold over, and close it off. You can also staple, but if you're going to use a stapler, please get assistance from an adult. So we have a completely closed end. Now we're going to do the same thing at the bottom, but we need a pencil first. So you're going to insert the pencil and I would go all the way up, push the pencil so it's all the way up at the top. And then we're going to tape around it. So this is a little bit trickier. We want to try to get the tape to not really affect the pencil. And again, it is easier if you can, instead of taping, staple but please get the assistance of an adult before you staple anything. I have a little extra tape here on the side, so I'm just gonna pull that off. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. The scotch tape didn't work very well on the top, so I'm going to go back over it with some packing tape and see if I can get it to stay in place. Packing tape is a little bit wider, so it helps assure that things will stay closed. And then just make sure that the pencil is secure, that it's not sliding around anywhere. Mine is sliding a bit, so I'm going to go over it with just a little bit more tape. And I'm actually going to get the pencil involved in the taping process. <clears throat> then you can just kind of cut around the pencil and fold it down, and that should hold your handle steady. Okay, so now we have the ability to play it just like the other ones. It's not quite the same shape. We have to do the same thing one more time when we're measuring the back, and make sure you're on the inches side the tube is about two and a half, so we're going to go again with 10 inches of string here, measuring to the 10 and cutting. We're going to check that out and see how that looks. It looks like it'll work very well. One more time, you will attach the bead to the string. Fold over and tie. Make sure that is on securely. My tape has fallen off the table. And again, we're simply taking it and we're going to pull it across the back of the middle of our dendon dico and tape it there all the way across.
and now you can play it. So that was the Den Den Daiko three ways. One of the most traditional instruments in Czech music is the tambourine. We're going to try a tambourine three ways, depending on what items you have available in your house. We're going to start with the simplest version, and let's make sure you have the materials first. The simplest version is going to be a chenille stick, also known as a pipe cleaner, and then some jingle bells. The procedure is very simple. All you're going to do is slide the bells onto your chenille stick. I'm going to do three, so one in the center, one on that side, and one on this side. And then all you're going to do is get the round shape by forming a circle, and then you'll simply twist. And now you have your own little tambourine. You can tap it or you can shake it. That's the easiest version if you have these materials. Version two of the tambourine uses a paper plate, and it can be any size paper plate. It doesn't have to be this large. It can be smaller. It doesn't have to be paper. It can also be one of the cardboard plates. And if you don't have a paper plate, you can simply take any paperboard box or a piece of cardboard and cut a circle shape in order to create it. We do it a lot of times with pizza boxes. So if you're a fan of pizza, you can save that box and use that box to make a lot of really fun musical instruments. I'm going to just reuse my bells here. So in addition to the plate and the bells, you're also going to need something to attach them to the plate. So these are twisty ties. They generally come in your trash bags or you'll find them tying your bread bags. Um, if you don't have that, you can use a chenille stick and just cut it into smaller parts. Or, barring that, you can simply use string to tie them. You're also going to need a hole puncher, and sometimes it is difficult to press that down and get the holes made, so if you need assistance, please ask an adult. We're going to put four holes in our plate, one on each side. So I'm going here, and then I'm going to go straight across to the other side. Then I'm going to come down to the bottom and go straight across to the other side. So now I have a plate with four holes in it. To each one of those holes, I'm going to attach whatever your attacher is going to be. In my case, I'm going to use the twisty tie. So I'm going to thread the jingle bell with the twisty tie, there's a little hook at the back of the bell, and I'm going to send the tie through that little hook so that it's hanging there. And then what you want to do, we want all the bells to be on the same side. So you're going to place it through the front and then tie it together on the outside of the plate. So the tie is outside and the bell is up front. And you'll repeat that on each side. And once you've done that, just fold this underneath. This way, you know that bell is not going to be launched when you try to shake your plate. So here it is again. Wily little suckers. You find that little hole in the back, and you're going to slide it through that hole to the center. Then we're going to find the hole in the plate, and we're going to place one end through. Connect the two ends on the outside of the plate. Twist and twist and twist and fold it behind. Two more times, we need to do that same procedure. So I have it going here. I'm twisting and folding and one more time. Feel free to put more bells if you'd like. The more bells on there, the louder it is. So before you put 
27 bells on your tambourine. Just ask your parents if that's okay. And now you have a little bit louder sounding tambourine than version one. So now we're gonna move to version three. So if you don't have any jingle bells, this is the version that you're going to use. And here's what you'll need. Two paper plates. And then we need something to put inside. So what I have here are some dried black beans. You can use rice, you can use pennies, you can use um, any, any sort of metallic object that you find. So you, you could use paper clips, whatever you have, just use that. And so you're gonna take one of the plates, we're going to need a stapler for this, and really it does need a stapler because the tape just simply won't hold. We're gonna take one of the plates and place it as if you were going to eat something off that plate. And we're gonna put just a little bit of the objects inside. We want them to have enough space to move around so you don't wanna fill them completely. And then we're gonna take the other plate and put it on top. And then you're going to staple all the way around. And this part is a little bit difficult because the edge of the paper plate is not flat. So getting the stapler in there and stapling all around is gonna take a little bit of time. But you need to make sure you go all the way around because if you don't, your objects are gonna be flying out when you're finished. Almost done. And now, this is the loudest version of the tambourine. It's not metallic, but if you put pennies inside, you're gonna get a much more metallic sound or some kind of coin, or if you use some other metallic object. And that is the tambourine three ways. Now we're going to make Spanish castanets known as castanuelas. So castanuela comes from the word castaño, which means chestnut, hence the shape of our castanet. They typically come in pairs. I'm going to make one, but feel free to make a second one. First, let's make sure we have all the materials that we're going to need. So you're gonna need a piece of cardboard, and you can use the empty packaging from any cookie, cracker, or pasta container. You can use a piece of cardboard. Anything relatively thick, cardstock will work as well. Since we're going to be measuring, we're going to need a pencil and a ruler. You will also need scissors. And you're going to need to make holes, so a hole puncher is best if you have one. You will need string. And then to make the clapping sound, you can use either buttons or pennies, any type of coin works, and that'll help us get the sound of the castanet. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to make the base of our castanet, and we're going to do that with our box. So if your box is not already open and flat, we'll open it up. So I'm going to just pull this piece right here. 
so that I now have what's going to look like a rather large piece of cardboard. We're going to measure on this piece of cardboard a strip that is six inches long by three inches wide. So make sure you're on the inches side of your ruler. And you'll simply draw a line from the top of your ruler to the six. So I have now this line. Now I'm gonna draw a line from the bottom of that line across three inches. Again, make sure you're on the inches side, going across to three inches. Now I'm going to go from that line up six inches. And to complete my rectangle, I'll draw a line across that is three inches. If you're planning on making a second castanet, go ahead and draw a second rectangle that is six by three. Once you've completed drawing the rectangle, we're going to cut it out. So now we have one strip. We need to find the middle of the strip in order for the two castanets to be equal on both sides. So you can either measure, we already know that this is six inches, so you would find the midpoint of six, which would be six divided by two, which equals three, or you can simply fold it over, and we wanna make sure that the pattern side, the colored side is gonna be on the inside. Place the two ends together, and then squeeze. So now we have two equal sides. Can you hear that? No. And that is why we're going to insert something inside the castanet to get it to get that characteristic clap. But before we do that, these are not the same shape. So we're going to try to at least get the rounded bottom of the castanet shape. And we will do that by drawing a a curve around the bottom. So we're giving our little card a little smile and then we'll cut that out and it will cut on both sides because we're already folded over. So now we have a little bit more rounded of a shape. And before we add our clackers on the inside, we want to put the holes on the outside. You'll notice on the regular castanet there are two holes here with a string inserted. So we want to put those holes in before we do anything else so that the holes are not in the way of the castanet itself. Hole punchers are very difficult to use. Depending on how thick your cardboard is, you may need some assistance to get the holes in there. I will just put a hole on one side and then I'll put a hole on the other side. So now we have our two holes and they're evenly spaced on both sides of our castanet. Now it's time to put whatever object that you have inside the castanet. I'm gonna work with the buttons, but if you don't have buttons, you can use coins of any size because this gives us enough space to even use a dollar coin if you have them. When you're using buttons, you want to make sure that the, the front part of the button is down so that the ends hit each other so that we get that clacking sound. So I'm going to be working on the colored side and I'm going to tape down one of the buttons directly in the center here. You want to make sure the tape goes all the way around so that it doesn't come off. So I've cut a very long piece of tape. I'm going to place it on there and fold it around so that it goes 
all the way around the back of my castanet as well. Now this next part is the tricky part. We need to make sure that the two buttons are going to hit each other, otherwise we don't get quite as much clack as we'd like. Still, it's better than what we had before. So you're going to take the other button and you're going to put it face up on top of this button. We're going to close the lid, turn it over without moving the button, and reopen the lid. And now it is placed exactly where it needs to go. Try not to move it. Grab a second very long piece of tape. and tape it down. Pull that tape all the way across the back. Now it sounds like castanets. So the last thing that we need to do is get the string to go through it. When you play castanets, you're going to take the two ends of the string and stick your thumb through so that it hangs down and you can tap it this way. What we're going to do is measure a length of string that is 12 inches. This is the entire ruler. Again, make sure you're on the inches side of your ruler. Place one end of the string at one end. Go all the way to the other end of the ruler. And cut. Here's our string, 12 inches. We're going to put one end of the string all the way through. And then we're going to take the other side from this way and put it through the other hole. So on one side we have the two strings hanging down and on the other side we have the strings going through. You're going to pull tight. Make sure the two string pieces are even. And then we're going to tie it. so that it's hanging this way. Now when you go to play it, you're going to pull that string up, stick your thumb through, and 12 inches is long to accommodate for someone with a larger hand. I have kind of a small hand. If it is too big, you can always cut it down, but if you make it too small, then you would have to start over. So this is a little bit bigger than my own thumb, but I can still play the instrument. And the castanet is played using all of the fingers except for your first finger. So your thumb is holding it, and then you use your other three fingers to tap. And you get slightly different tap based on each one. Feel free to decorate your castanet. You can paint the outside of your castanet if you'd like to, or decorate it in any way that you'd like. And remember that you can make a second one so that you have one for each hand. Happy castanetting, everyone.